Hi everybody, welcome to Top Tips for Dive Computers. Everybody needs one, let's dive straight in. Dive computers usually restrict which modes you can actually use shortly after a dive. Fresh out of the box, you can usually select which mode you have, whichever one you like for the dive at hand. But if you dive a mode, then the computer can often lock out other modes for a certain period of time. Gauge mode, for example. If you dive gauge mode, your dive computer will often limit you to only diving in gauge mode for a day or two after that dive because it hasn't been recording your nitrogen loading. Give it 24 to 48 hours and the other modes should start to be unlocked. Because of this, if you're planning a multi-dive trip where you're diving both air and nitrox, it's usually better to set your dive computer to nitrox mode, even if you're diving on air. Just set it to 21% and it's effectively diving on air. Computers often come with a really long strap or separate extension strap. This is to wrap around a bulky wetsuit or a dry suit. If you want to, you can cut off the excess part of the strap so it doesn't flap around in the water, but just make sure to put the dive computer on the thickest part of the suit and then give it a few extra inches and then cut at that point. You can always cut a little bit more off if it's still too long, but you can't add any more length if you cut it too short. A lot of dive computers allow you to fit bungee straps today. Bungees are better than a traditional rigid strap on thicker suits because they hold onto your suit even when it starts to compress at depth. They also have the benefit of not requiring them to be done up and undone at the start of the dive and at the end of the dive. You just pull them on and the two separate straps as well also means that you have a bit of redundancy. So even if one strap breaks, you still have the second one to hold your dive computer in place. Which wrist to wear your dive computer on? Uh, it's very much up to you, but there are some benefits of wearing it on your right hand side. You control your buoyancy with your left hand. So if you're trying to maintain a steady depth with no visual reference, you can actually look at your computer on your right whilst your left hand holds onto your inflator. If you dive with an analog compass, remember that the battery and the electronics of your dive computer can affect some magnets. So it's best to wear it either a good few inches away on the same arm or on the other wrist so that your computer doesn't have you swimming around in the wrong direction or in circles. It's important to log or download your dive soon after the dive. Dive computers have a very limited memory inside. So as soon as they run out of space, they start to overwrite the oldest dive in their logbook. If you haven't downloaded it or logged it, it's going to be lost. On some computers, you can adjust the sample rate, how often your dive computer records the depth and things, which can help reduce memory size of your dives and your computer can actually store more dives on it. Your dive profile will also appear much smoother in the logs because your computer isn't recording every little change when you move your arm. Most computers today retain their memory from before a battery change, so you shouldn't lose all of your dive history just by changing the battery. Older computers would reset themselves if you took the battery out, but modern ones do have that memory inside them. They will clear your tissues, so if you're diving soon after a battery change or you've been diving beforehand, do be very careful because you may still have nitrogen in your body that your computer doesn't know about. Most computers have a setting in them that can adjust for altitude and fitness. Altitude is an obvious one if you're diving at altitude, but you can also adjust some computers to be a bit more conservative. Remember that dive computers are just an approximation. They don't know how warm or cold you are or how dehydrated you are. So you can actually tell some dive computers and they'll make your next dive profile a little bit safer. That little wave section on the strap of your dive computer that you find on pretty much all watches and computers nowadays isn't there just to look pretty. It's actually suspension to allow for compression of your exposure suit. Without it, the strap length is constant and the computer will slide around at the maximum depth when your wetsuit has compressed. If your dive computer measures a tiny depth on the surface, it's not the end of the world. The pressure sensors are pretty good, but they're not perfect. If your dive computer displays more than a few centimeters when it's on dry land, then the pressure sensor could be damaged. They do fail over time, and in a lot of cases, there's not a lot that you can do. It's just time to frame it and get a new dive computer. All computers will use an algorithm to work out how long you can stay at depth. 
there are a lot of different algorithms out there. So while your computer says it's safe to ascend, your buddies might need a few more minutes. Some algorithms are better suited for deeper diving, others better for repetitive diving. So do your research and see what your buddy is diving on so that you have an idea of what's going on compared to your dive computer. If your body is nice and horizontal, then your, your whole body and dive computer is all at the same depth in the water. If you're upright in the water, then your legs are actually at a greater pressure than your dive computer. Only about a meter or so, but in the shallower waters, then you're gonna have a greater difference and your legs are decompressing at a slightly different rate to your dive computer. And it doesn't know if you're upright or not. So do your best to stay nice and flat, horizontal, especially on your safety stop. It's so simple, but too many divers just cast the manual to one side when they unbox their dive computer, only to get confused when some odd symbol pops up at 24 meters. Have a good look at the symbols your dive computer uses at least. So when they do pop up, you're not freaking out on your dive, just trying to work out in your head or skipping a ceiling because you don't even know what the ceiling is. Transmitters don't just display your tank pressure on your computer screen. In most cases, your dive computer can use your tank pressure, the depth and your breathing rate to work out how long that much gas will actually last in minutes. So you can better adjust your dive on the go. You can also set up alarms for your tank pressure if it drops to a certain point and your computer will alert you if you're not paying attention. Put a scratch guard on your computer. It's really quick and easy. They're pretty cheap as well. It's so easy to scratch the uh, the lens, and once the once it's scratched, it's scratched. You can't unscratch it. If the scratch guard gets scratched, fine. You just take that one off, and then you get a new one. It's there to take the damage and then be replaced. I'm. Personally, I'm quite careful with my dive computers, but all it took was one overly friendly seal with some very sharp claws to actually scratch one of my computers. Luckily, a new scratch guard could be fitted. Okay, so that was top tips. If you have any top tips that you've come across in your diving career, let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching everybody, and of course, safe diving.